You're listening to Radio Maria, a Christian voice in your home. We now bring you Fatima and the First Saturdays with Dr. Katrina Layden. Thank you. Let us begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon of you for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, God wishes to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the world. To do this, Our Lady gave us two special requests. Of these two requests, the first Saturdays is the most important and what we are responsible for doing. Let's do our part. But if we wish to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, it's not enough for the first Saturday's devotion to be done privately. It must be established in parishes and not in any public form, but in a way that is approved by the church. What we call the communal first Saturdays is approved by the church together with the use of the communal first Saturdays devotional book. Last week in our third program, we finished examining the second apparition of the angel examined the third apparition of the angel, and discussed some of Our Lady's first apparition at Fatima on May 13, 1917. Today, we will begin by continuing examining Our Lady's first apparition. Much of the material is from the Fatima and the First Saturday's book. The commentary on Our Lady's first apparition on May 13, 1917 continues. Our Lady continued by asking whether the children would be willing to offer themselves to God and bear all the sufferings He wills to send them as an act of reparation for the sins by which He is offended and in petition for the conversion of sinners. This seems very similar to what the angel had said in his second appearance, except for one very significant difference. Whereas, The angel spoke of offering everything the children did. Our Lady went further. She asked that the children offer themselves. The children themselves are to be a sacrifice or victim souls like our crucified Savior. This offering can often mean a spiritual participation in the cross rather than a physical or bodily participation in Christ's passion that would be out of the ordinary. In addition, we can offer everything we do as a sacrifice and, in particular, our daily duties, and especially our daily sufferings. As Jesus said, quote, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. As we read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 23. The grace of God will be our comfort we will see that the theme of sacrifice is especially developed in the, new two ap- in the next two apparitions and encouraged thereafter. Lucia's words. As she pronounced these last words, quote, the grace of God will be your comfort, end of quote. Our Lady opened her hands for the first time, communicating to us a light so intense that as it streamed from her hands, Its rays penetrated our hearts and the innermost depths of our souls, making us see ourselves in God, who was that light, more clearly than we see ourselves in the best of mirrors. Then, moved by an interior impulse that was also communicated to us, we fell on our knees, repeating in our hearts, O most holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, my God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. Commentary. It is not a coincidence that when Our Lady said, quote, the grace of God, end of quote, that an intense light streamed from her hands, 
and in a way very much similar to her apparition to St. Catherine Labouré in 1830. In this latter vision, the streaming light symbolized Our Lady's mediation of graces. Grace can penetrate our hearts and the innermost, innermost depths of our soul. As a result of such a grace, the children were able to see themselves in God. This is not heaven or the beatific vision, but it is an extraordinary mystical experience nonetheless. In any case, spiritual growth requires self-knowledge. Our greatest opportunity to acquire this self-knowledge on a regular basis is through the sacrament of penance. To fulfill the first Saturdays, Our Lady would later ask that we go to confession at least once a month. Self-knowledge was followed by a grace that moved the children to fall to their knees and repeat a short prayer addressed to the Holy Trinity. One is reminded of the prayer taught by the angel at his third appearance, also addressing the Holy Trinity. Like that prayer, the first act is to adore God. Yet, as a kind of abbreviation of that longer prayer in reparation for sin, the children were inspired to say a shorter prayer, which expressed their love for God in the Blessed Sacrament. Yet, while this love has meritorious value, it also has satisfactory value. It is a satisfactory value of an act of love that enables us to make reparation for the sins which offend God. While this prayer is beneficial to say at any time, it could also be appropriate to say after receiving Holy Communion. It could be a part of our offering of a communion of reparation in the first Saturday's devotion. Lucia's words continue. After a few moments, Our Lady spoke again. Pray the rosary every day in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war. Then she began to rise serenely, going upwards towards the east until she disappeared in the immensity of space. The light that surrounded her seemed to open up a path before her in the firmament, and for this reason, we sometimes said that we saw heaven opening. Commentary At all six of the apparitions, from May to October, Our Lady said to say the rosary every day. Promoting the first Saturdays helps to encourage the daily rosary and reinforces our, our ability to say the rosary better by the practice of the separate and additional meditation on the mysteries of the rosary. The communal first Saturdays provides the best way to promote the rosary since it demonstrates the way devotions should be directed to the liturgy and especially the mass. Also, through the use of scripture for the separate and additional meditation, one can more easily recall the scripture related to the mysteries when praying the rosary with the beads. Finally, the communal first Saturdays as a public practice gives visible witness on a regular basis to the importance of the rosary in the parish and so promotes the rosary. I encourage all of you to get our pamphlet called Promoting the Rosary through the Communal First Saturdays. You can get a free copy by going to www.communalfirstsaturdays.org forward slash rosary. Again, that's communalfirstsaturdays.org forward slash rosary. In the passage, in the text commentary continues, in the passage we just quoted, Our Lady said to say the rosary to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war. Certainly, 
the end of the First World War did come. One could say a kind of apparent peace ensued. Yet, this was not the peace of the gospel rooted in love of God and neighbor. One of the essential conditions for peace was greatly lacking, namely justice. Also, Russia was going through a revolution that resulted in a communist government, and this would result in devastating consequences throughout the world. Then, Our Lady began to rise upwards toward the east until she disappeared. This would be repeated for all six apparitions. This seems to be symbolic of Our Lady's assumption into heaven, which was solemnly defined as a dogma in 1950. This symbolic action establishes a close bond between Our Lady's appearance at Fatima and the dogma of her assumption into heaven. The Covadera environment is very open so as to lend itself to any phenomena in the sky above. By comparison, we see at Lourdes, shortly after the definition of the Immaculate Conception, which is a dogma, that Our Lady appeared partly enclosed by a niche within a large cave, which could be taken to symbolize the Immaculate Conception in the womb of St. Anne. In fact, Our Lady even identified herself as the Immaculate Conception. I think these fa facts about Lourdes and Fatima are quite amazing. Quite amazing. Okay, we'll um, continue now with the second apparition of Our Lady on June 13th, 1917. Lucia's words. As soon as Jacinta... Francisco and I had finished praying the rosary with a number of other people who were present. We saw once more the flash reflecting the light which was approaching, which we called lightning. The next moment, Our Lady was there on the Holmoke, exactly the same as in May. What do you want of me? I asked. I wish you to come here on the 13th of next month to pray the rosary every day and to learn to read. Later, I will tell you what I want. Commentary. The children and some other people prepared themselves for Our Lady's appearance by saying the rosary together. In the communal first Saturdays, we say the rosary together to prepare for our Lord's coming in the mass. After the people said the rosary, and after Our Lady appeared, Lucia asked what she wanted. After requesting the daily rosary, the very next request of Our Lady was that Lucia should learn to read. Learning to read is essential to Lucia's mission. By reading, Sister Lucia became very knowledgeable of sacred scripture. She used scripture profusely in her book calls to explain the Fatima message. In any case, writing requires reading. It is clear that writing was a part of Lucia's mission as we see. Reading prepared her to write her memoirs and letters and other writings as well. Later, we will show how developing a familiarity with scripture can be a powerful aid in fulfilling the first Saturdays, and can also help us to say the rosary. Lucia's words. I asked for the cure of a sick person. If he is converted, he will be cured during the year. I would like to ask you to take us to heaven. Yes, I will take Jacinta and Francisco soon, but you are to stay here some time longer. Jesus wishes to make use of you to make me known and loved. He wants to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. Am I to stay here alone, I asked sadly. No, my daughter. 
Are you suffering a great deal? Don't lose heart. I will never forsake you. My immaculate heart will be your refuge in the way that will lead you to God. The following footnote is included with the above text. Quote, because she was in a hurry, Lucia omitted the end of the paragraph, which in other documents reads as follows. Quote, I promise salvation to those who embrace it, meaning devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and those souls will be loved by God like flowers placed by me to adorn his throne, end of quote. I think that is just beautiful. Um, just, just to hear those words from Our Lady are just, just amazing. Again, she says, I promise salvation to those who embrace devotion to her Immaculate Heart. And those souls would be loved by God like flowers placed by Our Lady to adorn His throne. Beautiful. Okay, the text commentary continues. The words of Lucia, we just read, confirm that she was to remain on earth to carry out her mission. Her mission was announced in Our Lady's words as, quote, to make me known and loved end of quote, and to, quote, establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart, end of quote. To make Our Lady known and loved is a necessary condition before there can be any devotion to her Immaculate Heart. Love and devotion depend on knowledge. Thus, we need to know more about Our Lady's prerogatives as taught by the magisterium of the church, as well as by the doctors and saints of the church and those who faithfully represent these teachings to us. We need to know about Our Lady as a Virgin and Immaculate. We need to know more about her great dignity as the Mother of God and in our time, more about the meaning of her spiritual motherhood. Our Lady began to fulfill her spiritual motherhood by her cooperation in our redemption. Our Lady continues to act as our mother, as our advocate, and by mediating all the graces that come to us from her son. While the spiritual motherhood of Our Lady is already taught by the church, a dogma concerning Our Lady as our spiritual mother would certainly greatly help her children to know and love her maternal heart better, as well as provide her the special honor she deserves. One of the reasons our Lord said the first Saturday's devotion is requested is to make reparation for the offenses against Our Lady's spiritual motherhood. We will discuss this more later. Knowing our Blessed Mother's love for us can help us to respond to that love. Our Lady even helps us to do this by the graces she provides. A powerful aid is found in the devotion to her Immaculate Heart. Our Lady's maternal love is symbolized by her heart. The word heart appears in the Old Testament more than 800 times. The vast majority of these refer to the interior life, whether it be the intellect, will, memory, or imagination. The heart is the place where all of our acts, good and bad, begin. We see in scripture that Our Lady ponders and keeps all these things in her heart, as we see in the second chapter of St. Luke. Jesus tells us to learn from him, for he is gentle and humble of heart, as we see in in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 11, verse 29. Jesus also tells us that immoral acts begin in the heart, as we can also read in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 18 through 19. Yet, from sanctifying grace, Virtues are formed in one's heart. These virtues are strengthened by repeated good acts. 
these virtues are destroyed by serious sins. The greatest virtues are faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of all virtues and acts is charity or love. Hence, devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary focuses on love above all other virtues and acts. The burning love of Jesus and Mary for God and for us is represented by a flame. The way we can respond to Jesus' love and our Blessed Mother's love is by consecrating ourselves to them and offering reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of, for the sins against them. This is especially true for sins against Jesus in the Holy Eucharist and the prerogatives of Our Lady. In addition, meditation on the mysteries of the Rosary can be especially helpful in imitating the hearts of Jesus and Mary. Consecrating ourselves to the Sacred Heart of Jesus through, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary strengthens the foundation for our reparation to the hearts of Jesus and Mary. For consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary is a renewal of our baptismal consecration and vows. Not only were we anointed king and prophet, but also priest, which means to offer prayer and sacrifice in reparation for sin and in supplication for sinners. Further, the words, quote, to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart, end of quote, will be repeated again in the next apparition. Nonetheless, to understand this, let us examine the word establish in, in accepted definitions. To establish something means to make it permanent, visible, and widely known. To make something widely known is to make it public. For something to be widely known in the church, it must be approved. So, by desiring to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, God wants us to have a permanent, regular, and public devotion to her. This also suggests that God wants something approved by the church so that this devotion to the Immaculate Heart can be widely known and accepted. Even though the devotion could be practiced privately, it would not be enough. Also, Our Lady said, quote, in the world, end of quote. This means that the devotion must be practiced publicly worldwide. What is said here does not apply to the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary mentioned in the following month. This consecration is public, but it is not ongoing. It is not actively visible and permanent. It need only be done once to be fulfilled. Yet, what is said here can apply to the first Saturday's devotion visibly and publicly practiced in parishes with church approval. It can be ongoing and permanent. These characteristics are found in the communal first Saturdays, as we shall see later. The devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary could be called the major and distinctive theme of the Fatima message. Devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary should not be seen as separate from the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, but should be seen as a means to make our devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus more complete. Certainly, devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary already existed in the world at that time, so to establish in the world was not about starting the devotion but about making it much more integrated into the life of the church. Indeed, the spread of the Fatima, Fatima message has certainly helped to do this, 
but there is much more to be done. In the next apparition, Our Lady will reveal two special requests for devotion to her Immaculate Heart. The fulfillment of these two special requests can lead the faithful to a more complete devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and therefore to a more complete devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, especially in the Holy Eucharist. Our Lady has promised that fulfilling these requests will lead to a period of peace in the world and the salvation of many souls. This means that the world as we know it will be totally transformed. All nations will come to the purified Catholic Church. Still, it is urgent that we not lose any time in doing what our Blessed Mother has asked. We have already mentioned one of these requests the first Saturdays. Much more remains to be done in spreading this devotion. The approved communal first Saturday's devotion has been designed to facilitate its spread and establishment in the world. This work can be the faithful's part to play in the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Next, we see that remaining alone on earth will bring great suffering to Lucia. But Our Lady reassures her that she will not forsake her, but her Immaculate Heart will be her refuge and the way that leads her to God. Our Lady's Son is the one mediator between God and man, but Our Lady mediates with God through Jesus by way of his sacred humanity. Also, Our Lady is always dependent upon and subordinated to Jesus through his sacred humanity. It is the sacred humanity of Jesus that makes it possible for him to be the one mediator between God and man. At the same time, the Immaculate Heart of Mary mediates between Jesus and us. Yet, Our Lady doesn't stand between us and Jesus, but brings us to Jesus and Jesus to us. So I think it's good for us all to remember that Our Lady will never forsake us and it will be her Immaculate Heart. It's her Immaculate Heart. Her Immaculate Heart will be our refuge and the way that will lead us to Jesus, who is God in the Holy Eucharist. So we should um, definitely remember that. So this message isn't just for Lucia and the children. It's for all of us. All right. Lucia's words continue. As Our Lady spoke these last words, she opened her hands. And for the second time, she communicated to us the rays of that same immense light. We saw ourselves in this light, as it were, immersed in God. Jacinta and Francisco seemed to be in that light, in that part of the light which rose towards heaven, and I in that which was poured out on the earth. In front of the palm of Our Lady's right hand was a heart encircled by thorns which pierced it. We understood that this was the Immaculate Heart of Mary, outraged by the sins of humanity, and seeking reparation. You know now, Your Excellency, what we referred to when we said that Our Lady had revealed the secret to us in June. At the same time, Our Lady did not tell us to keep it secret, but we felt moved to do so by God. Commentary. Again, Our Lady opened her hands and and rays of light were communicated to the children. They saw themselves in this light, quote, as it were, immersed in God, end of quote. Jacinta and Francisco were in that part of the light that rose to heaven. This could mean that Jacinta and Francisco would be given the graces which would prepare them for heaven in a short time. On the other hand, 
Lucia was immersed in that light, which could have represented the graces that would be given to her during her long mission on earth. The children saw Our Lady's heart encircled by piercing thorns in front of the palm of her right hand. The children will see this pierced heart again in the following month, and Lucia would also see it in two of three apparitions after Fatima. The children understood that the Immaculate Heart of Mary was outraged by sin and that she was seeking reparation. One should keep in mind the symbolism of seeking reparation for sin in similar manifestations that will be repeated in the third part of the secret and after the appearances at Fatima. While making reparation is a matter of justice, and it is due to both God and our neighbor when we offend them, as the mother of God and our spiritual mother, reparation is due to her more than anyone else after Jesus and the other two persons of the Holy Trinity. One of the reasons we fail in our attempts to achieve justice in the world is that we do not try to first make reparation to Jesus and his mother. Also, if we wish to practice the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, shouldn't we first show mercy to Jesus and his mother? Simeon had prophesied, as we read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 35, quote, And thy own soul a sword shall pierce, that out of many hearts thoughts may be revealed, end of quote. It would seem that the suffering was greatest for Our Lady when Our Lord suffered and died on the cross because of our sins. What does the suffering of our innocent, immaculate mother reveal about our, our hearts? There can be no doubt, while Our Lady later sought consecration to her immaculate heart, she emphasized reparation more than anything else in the practice of devotion to her heart. The first Saturday's devotion represents the most complete practice of reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. No other form of reparation can even begin to compare with the communion of reparation other than the sacrifice of the Mass. The first Saturday's devotion includes the communion of reparation together with the other supporting practices on the day that honors Our Lady. These other supporting practices, which are confession, the rosary, and the separate and additional meditation in Our Lady's company for 15 minutes, each in reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, are meant to dispose the faithful to receive Holy Communion more fruitfully. I want to stop here and just really stress the importance of these practices and and the number of them. So there's, to summarize, there's four practices, each to be done with the intention of making reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is really important to know this because if one of the practices are, is missing or the intention is missing, one does not fulfill the first Saturday. So to, again, to go over them, one, confession, two, receiving the communion of reparation, three, praying five decades of the rosary, and four, a separate and additional meditation on the mysteries of the rosary in Our Lady's company for 15 minutes. And each one of those needs to be done with the intention of making reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Very, very important. I stress, I, I can't stress this enough. Um, just over the last 15 years, I and even currently, I hear story after story after story of people who think they're making the first Saturdays, but aren't. They aren't fulfilling all of the practices. Um, 
just recently I heard of um, someone that for 50 years thought he was making the first Saturdays. 50 years. I mean, that's wonderful to have that you know devotion to Our Lady to trying to, to do what she wants. And he didn't know about the meditation. So that's, you know, that just underscores the importance of the need for education and promoting the first Saturdays um, in, in the correct way and promoting them um, and explaining each practice that needs to be done and, and for the intention that it needs to be done to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now, I want to say that, you know, anything good we do, of course, it is 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 good and 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 can definitely bring about many graces. So even though those may have not made the first you know Saturdays, what they did was good. You know, especially if they had a good intent, good intention in their heart. But at the same time, it's not. It wasn't fulfilling the first Saturdays like Our Lady wants. So that um, in fact, that's one of the reasons for our apostolate is to help really people understand exactly what Our Lady is asking them to do on the first Saturdays. Um, so, and again, if we do what Our Lady asks, many souls will be saved, many, and there will be a period of peace in the world. And this is such a huge promise. And so uh, we want to do whatever we can to help people understand and make the first Saturdays correctly. I also uh, want to mention that um, the communal first Saturdays, which is approved according to canon and liturgical law, which we mentioned, um, uses a devotional book. And this um, it's called the communal first Saturdays devotional. And by just using this book, going through it, one can make the first Saturdays correctly and without error. So as you as one goes through it, then each practice is there and it reminds the person to make that, you know, to do that practice in reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And so um, I encourage all of you to get a book and to be able to make the first Saturdays with that. It's very helpful and especially helpful for parishes. So when um, people gather together in um, the communal first Saturdays in the parish, they can follow along this book and make the first Saturdays correctly. Uh, so um, very important. Um, also, I want to uh, emphasize or, or mention that the practices in the communal first Saturdays are arranged in an order that disposes us to, in, to even receive more abundant graces from the Holy Eucharist. And um, this basically the communal first Saturdays is an excellent model for the Eucharistic revival. The way the practices um, help dispose us, for example, the rosary before um, the mass, it helps dispose our hearts to receive the graces from the Holy Eucharist. The meditation on the mysteries of the rosary after the mass, when we um, have received Jesus and who is present within us for a period of time, the meditation after mass helps us spend time with Jesus, realizing his true, realizing his true presence. And so when we spend time with Jesus, when we fulfill this meditation, he can pour even more abundant graces into our hearts that he really wants to do when we um, when we are paying attention and spending time with him. So that just wanted to uh, mention um, mention um, those very important uh, points. OK, the text commentary continues. Further. The communal first Saturdays provides an opportunity for the faithful to practice this devotion together more efficaciously as a visible witness and in an order compatible with Mary Alice Cultus, um, according, according to St. Paul VI. Let us be reminded of the children of Fatima who sought to pray together. For those of you who have, may have recently joined this is Dr. Katrina Layden, and you are listening to Fatima and the First Saturdays on Radio Maria, a Christian voice in your home. Today, we finished examining Our Lady's first and second appearances at Fatima. We will now be discussing Our Lady's third apparition at Fatima on July 13, 1917. We are doing this by going over some of the book, Fatima and the First Saturdays. 
Please remember that Radio Maria is 100% listener supported. We depend on the generosity of our listeners. There are many ways you can help. You can make a donation on the phone at 1-888-408-0201. Again, that is 1-888-408-0201. You can also go to radiomaria.us and click on Ways to Donate up at the top. Your donation will be a great gift, especially during the season of Lent. We can now examine Our Lady's appearance at Fatima on July 13, 1917. Lucia's words. A few moments after arriving at the Cova de Aria, near the Holmoak, where a large number of people were praying the rosary, we saw the flash of light once more, and a moment later, Our Lady appeared on the Holmoak. What do you want of me? I asked. I want you to come here on the 13th of next month to continue to pray the rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war because only she can help you. Commentary. The first words spoken by Lucia are the similar words she spoke in the two previous apparitions. Quote, what do you want of me? End of quote. This isn't about what Lucia wants for herself, but what Our Lady wants. Do we ask Our Lady this question? Obtaining peace begins with prayer. Our Lady is speaking of the peace of the gospel. This is a peace that flows first from the love of God and then love of neighbor. This love results from the grace of the Holy Spirit poured into our hearts. This peace is not only interior, but extends from the heart out into the world, bringing peace between peoples and nations. In asking that the rosary be said every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary, in order to obtain peace for the world, Our Lady states that, quote, only she can help you, end of quote. Does this mean that Jesus can't help us or that the saints can't help us? No. Our Lady is totally dependent upon and subordinated to Jesus. Yet, graces can only be obtained from Jesus through her, including the grace of peace. When Our Lady freely consented to Jesus coming into the world, she thereby consented to all grace and truth coming into the world in the person of Jesus. Our Lady has no less of a role now in heaven. As the scripture says, quote, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. End of quote. And we can find that verse in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 21. We would be denying God's word if we said that our Blessed Mother had less of a role now in heaven. If Our Lady obtains all graces from her Son, then can the saints help us? Yes. However, it should be understood, understood that the saints in heaven depend on Our Lady when they intercede on our behalf, just as they depended on her when they prayed on earth. Our dependence on our Blessed Mother is always the case, whether one realizes it or not. Yet, being conscious of this dependence permits, permits us to act more humbly and with greater efficacy. Lucia's words. I would like to ask you to tell us who you are and to work a miracle so that everybody will believe that you are appearing to us. Continue to come here every month. In October, I will tell you who I am and what I want, and I will perform a miracle for all to see and believe. I then made some requests, but I cannot recall now just what they were. 
What I do remember is that Our Lady said it was necessary for such people to pray the rosary in order to obtain these graces during the year. And she continued, Sacrifice yourselves for sinners and say many times, especially whenever you make some sacrifice, O oh Jesus, it is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Commentary Lucia asked the Heavenly Woman who she is and asked her to work a miracle so that everybody would believe in the appearances. This miracle would be a stepping stone that would bring many back to faith in God and His Church. Our Lady said she would do these things requested by Lucia in October and would also tell the children what she wants. The miracle will not only be a proof of the appearances, but also of what Our Lady said when she appeared. Again, the emphasis in the first three appearances is on the message, reaching a high point in July. The next three appearances emphasize the proofs of the message. In the part of the July message we just quoted, Our Lady again mentioned a more advanced spirituality of sacrifice by saying, quote, sacrifice yourselves for sinners, end of quote. Earlier, sacrifice was also spoken of in terms of actions and suffering. Here, Our Lady speaks of sacrificing the person. In this way, we imitate Jesus who sacrificed himself as a victim on the cross for sinners. Our baptismal consecration has already marked us as priests, prophets, and kings. This universal priesthood calls us to offer sacrifice as well as pray. This means that we can offer what we do, what we suffer, and our very selves for sinners. Thus, we hope to make reparation for the sins of the world as far as God enables us to do so and to remove any obstacles to the bestowal of grace as well as actually obtain that grace. Our Lady then gave the children a prayer to say often and whenever they make a sacrifice. The prayer begins, quote, O Jesus, it is for love of you, end of quote. The theological virtues are the greatest of all the virtues. These are faith, hope, and charity, love, with the latter providing the motive for this prayer. Without faith, there can be no hope, and without hope, there can be no love. But the greatest of these is love, as we can read in the first letter of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 13. The virtue of love is manifested in the act of love of God first and then of our neighbor. Love is also the mother of all virtues and their acts. The act of love provides the motive for all the other virtues and acts. Further, the greater the act of love, the greater is the meritorious and satisfactory reparational value of the act. Love is the motive for making a sacrifice and for the practice of all virtues. Without love, the other virtues are nothing of any lasting value. Thus, the prayer Our Lady gave us expresses that out of love, one can offer sacrifice, an act of the virtue of religion. That sacrifice can be motivated by an act of love, love for Jesus, who is both God and man. This act of love can console him and provide him reparation for the sins that offend him. Next, we see that the prayer offers, the offers a sacrifice for the conversion of sinners. The grace of conversion is necessary for peace in the world and the salvation of souls. Conversion may mean coming to the fullness of participation as a member in the body of Christ by becoming a Catholic, or it could mean coming into and progressing in the state of sanctifying grace and charity. All are called to continual conversion. 
In the last part of the prayer, we offer the sacrifice to Jesus, quote, in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary, end of quote. This corresponds with the request for reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the second apparition of Our Lady. This prayer means that we would offer all of our sacrifices in reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This prayer can also be used privately when receiving a communion of reparation on the first Saturdays or on other days. Also, the prayer taught by Our Lady doesn't prevent other intentions being added as Jacinta did. Well, as we come to the close of our program, I would like to give you a preview of what we will be discussing in our next program that airs again this coming Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We will continue discussing Our Lady's apparition on July 13, 1917. This apparition is one of the most important Fatima apparitions. In fact, one cannot properly understand the Fatima message without it. And one cannot fully understand the first Saturdays without it. You will not want to miss this program. Most of the material in this talk and many other important facts can be found in the book called Fatima and the First Saturdays. In fact, there are study groups using this book online. People from different parts of the world connect. You are welcome and invited to register for our next groups that start in May. Please go to www.communalfirstsaturdays.org. Again, that is communalfirstsaturdays.org. Please remember that Radio Maria is 100% listener supported. We depend on the generosity of our listeners. There are many ways you can help. You can make a donation on the phone at 1-888-408-0201. Again, that is 1-888-408-0201. You can also go to radiomaria.us and click on Ways to Donate up at the top. Again, that is radiomaria.us. Your donation will be a great gift, especially during the season of Lent. Remember, God wishes to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the world. To do this, Our Lady gave us two special requests. Of these two requests, the first Saturdays is the most important and what we are responsible for doing. Let's do our part. But if we wish to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, it is not enough for the first Saturday's devotion to be done privately. It must be established in parishes and not in any public form, but in a way that is approved by the church. What we call the communal first Saturdays is approved by the church together with the use of the communal first Saturday's devotional book. Let us end with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O most holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, my God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you have a very blessed solemnity of the, the solemnity of the Annunciation tomorrow and a very blessed week. This is Dr. Katrina Layden with Fatima and the First Saturdays. Until next week. Mm-hmm.